This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Adobe Photoshop CS6 comes packaged with 65 new and or improved features. As I mentioned earlier, this is a major update. Let's look at 10 of these new features that I think are kind of interesting. I'm not saying they're the top 10, but I think there are 10 things in Photoshop that are kind of defining the direction it's going in. Let's start with this. I've got an image of a rose open, and from what I've heard, a rose by any other name still smells as sweet. Go to the word filter and go down to oil paint. Totally new feature. Now again, we're just going to look at it quick. We'll get into more detail later. I usually like to start with shine. Now watch what happens when I turn this on. And so the more you do, the more detail you can see. You can always tone that down later. You can change the lighting, the direction of the lighting. You can get into things like bristle detail, which actually increases the actual bristles used by the brush. Notice how it even looks like it's painting around as if it's a separate oil in here in the mortar on the bricks on the edges of the rows. It's an amazing thing. Scale is the scale of the effects, and you can really pump this up to get a dramatic result if you want. And then we can use this one right here. It cleans up the brush strokes. And then stylization, which to me is like detail. Then I might come down here and decide if I want more shine or I want less. And just simply click OK. And there you go. Number one, oil paint. Another tool that I find valuable, and we'll stick with the rose another time here, is the patch tool. I know what you're going to say. It's been there for several versions, Andy. I agree. But in CS6, they really did something valuable to this tool. I use it a whole lot more than I used to. Now, it is located directly underneath the spot healing brush tool. One, two, there it is. What do we do with it? Well, if you've ever used it before, you make a selection over what you want to patch and then move that area over the area you want to patch it with. But look at what's going on up here. Content aware. We now have the ability to do content aware patching with this patch tool. Now, the adaptation can be very strict or can be very loose. How much of it do you want to change? We'll leave that at medium. And one other thing that I absolutely love, we can now use the patch tool with a separate layer. Real quick here, I'm going to come down here, make a blank layer. I want to get rid of one of these water drops. Why? Because it's a good illustration, I suppose, of what's going on. I spent a lot of time with a spray bottle trying to get these things. So we've got it about like that. Drag it over the area that you want to patch it with and let go. Not too bad. It's a new and improved version of the old patch tool and it works great because it now has content aware and we can use additional layers. My tool number two. Another new tool in Photoshop CS6, which I really do like, is called the Content Aware Move Tool. Now, for you old hands at Photoshop, you're probably aware of the Content Aware Delete tool. Like, I want to get rid of that bird up there, so I do a Content Aware deletion of the bird. Content Aware Moving, I can move the bird. Kind of neat. Let's do this. Let's create a new layer, because we can. We're going to do our work in that layer. Let's come over here first and pick up the magic wand. Selection is the name of the game here. I'm going to come up to the bird and pop him right about there. Looks like I got most of him. I'm going to go to the word select and go down to modify expand. And let's take it out by about eight. That's fine. Now you don't have to do it this way, but understand this selection area that the move tool uses for content aware can be made with any tool. Now, if we come over here, content aware move tool is underneath the spot healing brush tool. I'm going to come over here, reselect layer one. And I'm going to move the bird, say, right about somewhere like that. Let's see what that does for us. Now, check that out. That's not too bad. But if you've got good eyes, you say, Andy, you left a piece of the bird up there. Yes, I did. 
So I'm going to come over here real quick and I'm going to pick up my spot healing brush tool and click, make sure you got sample all layers on. I'm going to pop it right there, one click, and that's gone. Notice everything is in this layer. So you have total control over it. Content aware moving. Pretty cool. Another feature that I really do like is tied to a tool that has been there since the beginning the Magic Wand tool. It's the ability to create a sample size for the Magic Wand. Now, if you didn't know this, and I hope you did, if you came over in years past to the eyedropper tool and selected it, you have an option up here for a point sample. Did you know that if you changed it there, it would change it for the Magic Wand? But now, if I click it, we actually have it right here. It's convenient. I don't have to go back to the eyedropper to make sure I've got what I want. It's right there in front of my face. Now I've got some guides on this photo because I want to click in the same spot and show you how this works. My tolerance is set to 30. I have contiguous off. So it's going to select all pixels in the tolerance range no matter where they are. I'm looking to get the sky. Now my point sample by default is always probably at 1. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click right in that spot. I got a good portion of the sky. Now my options to get the rest might be to shift click or maybe to increase the tolerance of the magic wand which could cause its own problems. Why don't we try sampling a bigger area? Now what I'm going to do is take it to the max. That's 101 by 101. Now before I do this, make a mental note of what got selected. We're going to do it again. I'm going to press command D, deselect. We'll get in that same spot again and try it again. Now check that out. With one click, without influencing my tolerance, I got almost everything. Now there are two areas that are a problem, but they're easy to fix. We're going to go to the lasso tool. This area I want to add. You hold the shift key down and you do a circle around that area. And notice on the walkers up here, if I hold the alt key down and circle around them, it goes away. Changing the point sample on the magic wand a new feature for an old tool. Have you ever heard the expression that you can't teach an old dog new tricks? I don't know if that's really true or not, but there are two old dogs in Photoshop, Curves and Levels, been there since the beginning, and Photoshop CS6 has just kind of taught them, if you will, a new trick. So we're back on the step pyramid again. Somebody told me one time that they built those to practice before they built the big ones. I have no idea but I want to make it look a little bit better. I want to use curves. Now the new feature in curves and levels is what is called auto curves and levels. And if you know anything about me, I'm not a big fan of clicking an auto button, but let's just say that you're not that great with curves yet. You want to learn a little bit more about how it works. This is actually not a bad way to do it. So I've got the layers panel out here. Let's go ahead and click this button, the half moon icon, and go down to curves. Remember, these same features are in Levels. Go to this button right here, and that little button is for Options. Go down to the New Options, Auto Options. The first one, Enhance Brightness and Contrast. You've got Find Dark and Light Colors, that's not too bad. Enhance Per Channel Contrast, and Enhance Monochromatic Contrast. Let's go back to Find Dark and Light Colors and then go ahead and click OK. We will get into much more detail on this during the lessons. But as you can see, it has changed how the curve functions. Now that I've gotten this far, I might go ahead and choose to start modifying it again myself using my own ways of doing things, and it gives you a little better idea on how to work curves and levels. Auto, curves, and levels. Teaching an old dog new tricks.